Nothing new. Nothing new. I haven't watched that too. Love stories are he. Huh? Finding Nemo, I love that. That's my favorite story. Favorite story, you know? Keep on swimming, keep on swimming. I love it. I'm waiting for Finding Dory. So there you go, gentlemen, uh, about telling stories. So about narration and dialogue and acting, you need... This is, I'm talking about physical delivery. I'm not talking about written stories. I'm not talking about stories that you create on the media. That's a whole new ball game. You know I mean? But this is the principle, this is the essence of it. Every story needs to have a certain theme, a certain moral, a certain truth inside it. If there is no truth, if there is no learning, it's not a story. I know you said that there can be a story without a moral. I tell you this, against Joker's wishes, that every story has to have a purpose, a meaning, something that you put across. Even if it's the dumbest stories that you ever heard, pick a dumbest story. Lion and the Mouse. Friendship, yeah? The two men and the bear in Aesop's fable. Friendship and commitment and loyalty and courage. There will always be a lesson at the end of it. Take the most. Finding Nemo. Letting go. Yeah? There will be a message in all the stories and that's how you tell stories. What else can I tell you? So you put your left brain aside and your right brain begins to dance. Begins to flow. Begins to improv with the storyteller. Right? Now, of course, the third portion of the third or fourth step of storytelling is that you want to create the engagement. That means if it lasts for about 30, 40 minutes, never tell a story for more than 40 minutes. You said seven minutes? Speeches? 40 minutes. Maximum. But that has to be a really powerful story. It is a huge story. It has to have several characters, has to have dialogue, has to have several ups and downs in the story. 45 minutes. People who talk to you for more than 45 minutes should die on stage. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Now, as far as I was thinking of filling in the gaps of what Joko and the three musketeers did, I think I filled the need. Is there anything else you want to know? You want to have another story? So I'll say goodnight and goodbye. Well done. We can do two more. Right? One I'll tell, the third one, uh, the second one, we'll create together. Okay? Okay? Sassy? One more glass of warm water. <laughs> more lemas. More lemas. Oh. Okay, let me tell you a nice story. Do you want a story from my past? Sure. Yes. Do you want a story from somebody else's past? <laughs> so some people, I, the last year I did several workshops on storytelling, large audiences, internal. There were some questions that were asked of me, which are not answered in my book. One of them was, do you always make yourself the hero or a character in the story? Storytellers, master storytellers, must you always? Is it a good idea to make yourself a character in the story? No. Depends. 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 What do you think, guys? Yes. Yes? Always? Yes. How about you? Depends. Here's the deal. You can. It does depend on the story, you know, depend on what you want to put across, no? But you must not glorify yourself in the story. You must play the underdog, you must play the patsy, you must play the gullible guy. The story is about the lesson, not really about the characters. Okay, so if you are the character and you are the storyteller, you're going to sell your story short. Yeah, that's one learning of it. The other person was asked of me, which was very important. I did this at AIM a few months ago. And they said, Roger, do we have to... This is about creating corporate change at a group level. Do we have to tell stories always from the past? Do they always have to be historical stories that happen? Or can they be stories of the future? What do you think, guys? Huh? What do you think? Stories from the past, Nangyare, or Pangara? Uh, pastor. <laughs> Okay. Stories from the past, if you need to strengthen your audience, if you need to highlight the skills and successes, stories of the future, possibilities, if you want to inspire and uh, uh, ignite them into action. No? So you need to create hope. Thus you keep your audiences or your listeners moving on, like in improv. That's why improv is very tightly parallel to storytelling. There was a second story that was a story to that. Uh, second person that was asked of me. Uh, okay, so one story coming up. 
story from my past. What? I have told this story, by the way. Oh, I need to remove my jacket. I'm really proud. Just one more hand, keep me clean. So, well, I've told this story before. I'm going to break it into the middle, start from somewhere. How's that? Yeah? See if I can catch it. You hold it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, Sir Arputaraj was the name of my teacher. And he had the eyes of Karuna over there and the skin tone of Karuna. He was a Christian. Are you a Christian, Karuna? He was a Christian guy. And I used to go to a Zoroastrian Persian school. He was short, dark, curly head, with pomade in his hair, had a nice brushy mustache, black one, had nice curls in the front. And he used to carry the Bible and uh, Charles Darwin's Theory of Evolution and Physics and Chemistry books and a box of dust, a, bo a dust and a box of chalks. And he used to march into class. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he used to smile, calling us. No, close up. Yeah? Close up the ultra blue smile. He used to walk around the corridors in class like that. And he used to teach us physics, math, and chemistry. He had a habit. Every time he'd come into class, he'd say, throw open those windows. Throw open those doors. I want fresh air. I want fresh air. So the boys in my school, which was a hooligan school, all um, bad boys like me, you know? and there were about 50, just like you. Well, you're not all boys, you're some girls, huh? All of us used to tease him. We used to call him Sir Fresh Air. What was his name? Sir. And it was not fresh air, it was fresh air. Come on, do it with me. Fresh air. Let in the fresh air. So he was very funny, very forgiving, full of kindness, compassion, and mercy. It's called Karuna in my language, huh? And that the big boys used to pick on him. Anything we did was fine. Mr. Harputa with Raj would say, Yeah, mind, let it go, open the window, let fresh air come in. Now, our school, back in the 60s, was like army barracks. There was sand and dust, like the Sahara Desert and the windows and the tables and there was a blackboard. Everything was of wood. There were tamarind trees and neem trees in the, in the playground and there used to be boys playing outside. One day, here's where the story begins. Yeah? One day, Arbutaraj comes into class and this time, though he's walking as he used to walk, there was no smile on his face. He was still holding the Bible and the theory of evolution on his hands. He came to class, Put his stuff down on his desk, picked up the duster, we call it duster, you call it eraser, <laughs> and he cleaned the blackboard, spit and spat, until there was no trace of chalk on the blackboard. Then he took a chalk, then he went to the blackboard. He wasn't smiling, and the boys were still noisy, noisy throwing aeroplanes and doing stuff, screaming, shouting, standing on the desk. He went to the blackboard. He put a little dot right in the center of the big black 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 And then he sat down. He stands the smile, he stands the mischief in his eyes, he stands nothing, and he was looking straight into the distance. And the boys were noisy, but this guy didn't know. And they went, sir, what's that, sir, sir, is that fresh air, sir? What is that, sir, is that fresh air, sir? What is that, sir, sir, is that fresh air, sir? Today, he said, we're going to learn about astronomy. So is that astronomy, sir, is that fresh astronomy, sir? What is that, sir? He didn't respond. The windows were still knocking, the dust was still moving around, the trees were swinging in the wind, the kids were playing out there, and the boys finally Settle down, just like you, soundless, nothing, totally engaged as to what's coming next. Because you can't tease a man who won't be teased, right? So he sat there. And after what seemed like eternity, after you could hear a pin drop in the glass, he sat down. And he said,
Imagine. What did he say? Imagine. He said the huge black ball is a whole universe. Uh -huh. The boys were just like you. Very quiet, Fred. Very, very quiet. Keep your silence. Imagine. He said the whole black ball is a universe. Then he said, Imagine within that universe that the good Lord created. That little dot I put is our Milky Way. You know what the Milky Way is? Yes. He said, imagine that's the Milky Way and within that Milky Way are hundreds of solar systems all within that dot in the big black universe. And he said, now imagine. He said, within that dot which has our Milky Way, which has all the solar system, the sun, the moon, the sun, the Jupiter, the Mars, etc. Inside that dot, and within that dot, which has our solar system, the Jupiter, the Mars, the, planet, the sun, the moon, the stars, is your planet Earth. Imagine that. He said, and the boys were, the guy was shrinking away to the chair. No? Then he said, now, he said, imagine, that within that universe, within that Milky Way, within that solar system, within the world, all that within, which is within that dot, is your great country, India, with 1.1 .1 billion people. And he said, within that great country, India, 1.1 billion people, is your hometown called Pune. And he said, within that hometown, inside that dot, inside that dot, inside that dot. Is a wonderful school called Sardan Gastur Hoshan Boys High School. The boys have become like ants. What do you call ants in Tagalog? <laughs> exactly. I was there with said, yes. And then he said, within that school is your classroom. And within that classroom, I'm teaching you astronomy, and you are learning astronomy from me. And he said, no. End of story. The moral is up to you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Give it to me. What is the moral? What is the moral? Well, when I was sitting there, of course he didn't tell me the moral. I was thinking, if I am so negligible, so nothing, so nada, so zilch, so zero, hardly visible to my own self. Why the heck am I proud? What makes me have false pride? What makes me feel that I am not good enough for my own shoes? What makes me feel that I am greater than the next person or Mr. Rajputaraj? That's what I was thinking when I was sitting in this space today. 40 years later, every time, every time I feel my head bloat, every time I feel like I'm walking on air, that air, a lot of, what do you say that? Hot air inside your body, parts in your head, and you float. I think of that story. Regardless of where I am, what I'm doing, in what society, what circumstance I am, if I want to come down to earth, I go back to that moment and imagine brings me right down home. So that's the story. Yeah. You take it. After your confession. All right.